Hey, welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 28 today, now verses 7 through 11. Uh, Saul uh, is cut off from the Lord. He's facing a giant national crisis. What's he going to do? And God isn't answering him. What's he going to do? Let's read verses 7 to 11. Sorry about this. It's pretty tragic stuff, but let's see what the Bible says. Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes, and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, Please conduct a seance for me, and bring up for me the one I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, Look, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the spiritists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. Now this is a catastrophic uh, point in Saul's experience. This is, this, is, this is eternally disastrous. Saul makes a decision. God is not answering him. He should have understood from that what to do. But he's got to have an answer. He's got to have a supernatural answer. And so we have this tragic verse 7. Saul says, find me a woman who's a medium. I want to get a seance. I want to talk to fallen uh, uh, demon spirits or, or fallen spirits, and I want to get some insight from them. Since God's not answering me, I'll, I'll, I'll just go to his, his opponent ridiculous totally uh totally and and by the way look at his his servants they remind him that they know exactly where to find somebody but he'd also already put everybody all of them out of the land supposedly but interesting in the moment of, of need they they know exactly where to find a spirit medium and he goes to her all disguised and notice what he says you know bring up the one i'm going to name she says to him verse nine yeah, you remember all these have been cut off are you trying to you know kill me? And then comes this crazy thing. He says, as the Lord, he swears by the Lord, as the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Well, if you go back to the Old Testament, you find that God is totally against spirit mediums. I mean, you cannot say, I promise, I swear on God, uh, on the Lord's name, that no harm will come to you for doing this this thing which is forbidden by, by God's own command. But that's what he does. She agrees, and he says, okay, bring Samuel up for me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But here's a man we noticed yesterday morning left to himself. He is confused. He's not thinking with great clarity or rationality or logic. He's desperate and he's now making a catastrophic uh, catastrophic decision here. Not, not in a moment. He's not going to be lost on, on, on a freak, freakish whim. His life uh, was worked its way down to this point for a long period of time. Bad decision, bad decision, bad decision, bad decision, bad decision. All these decisions sort of against God's way. And now he comes down to this, and this will be this will be the fatal decision. But um, God gives a man free choice. And God gave even Saul, who had become, become God's enemy. He didn't take away his free choice. And now left to himself, Saul exercises his free choice. And the only way a man left to himself inevitably will exercise his choice, he is making a choice which will cost him his eternity. So we're going to chop it there, you know, cliffhanger, and come back to it tomorrow morning and see what happens next. But let's not get into that kind of a space where we have allowed ourselves to drift or even walked away from God to that spot where we're just left to ourself. And then we make that final catastrophic ultimate ultimate decision to step away from God finally and irrevocably. Let's not do such a thing. And Saul is living out this kind of nightmare right before our eyes in this text. It's time to pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are seeing a man self-destruct as we read this story. Oh Lord, we think of our own weaknesses, we think of our own need, we think of our own, the ease with which we step away from you sometime. Please Lord, may it not be so in our life. Lord, may we purpose in our heart never to let things come to this kind of a space, and may we be in be entirely transformed and on your side. In any time of emergency that comes to us, then we can turn to you and you will give us what is needed. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Self-destruct right before our eyes. You and I don't ever, ever, ever need to go there. May God be with you.